Okay, today we're going to start the fine base, Amr Aleph, three lines from the bottom, Lema Ketanoi. We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. So now we say, okay, what are we, uh, what's going on over here? We're talking about an oral, someone that's not circumcised. We said that he's not allowed to eat, uh, eat truma. What about someone that was, yes, uh, circumcised, but then he stretched the, the foreskin, like plastic surgery, or stretched it so that it looks like he was not uncircumcised? He put it back on. So what happens then? He has to be circumcised again. Is that a, a biblical law or is that a rabbinic law? So Rav Huna told us that that's a rabbinic law. Because biblically, he can still eat truma. We had a brysa that said that's not so. Okay. Um, Oh, no, we, had a, we have a, 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 a Brysa that says that it's not even a rabbinic law, that he's totally permissible. Now the Gemara suggests that maybe there's a source that it's even a Daraisa. The Gemara says, Let's say that this is a Machlekes <coughs> Tanoim. Mashuch. If someone's foreskin was stretched, not the foreskin, if the regular skin was stretched, so it looks like a foreskin. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be part of this. Someone that was born already circumcised. Or a convert that was circumcised before he converted, you know, from whatever culture he comes from. And of a cotton shovers money. And a child that didn't have the bris on time. So it's a late, a late bris. Bashar Kalani Mulam, or anyone else that was already circumcised. What, what, what example could that be? For example, someone that has a double foreskin. It's, they cut one, but they left the other one. There's two skins there. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> All of these examples, all of these cases, the circumcision needs to be performed by day. Like a regular circumcision. Sounds like this is a Torah law, that all of these people need to have a proper circumcision. Rabbi Lazar Bar Shemenaimer, this is the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai. Rabbi Lazar Bar Shemenaimer, he says, Bismanai, Eini Mulamela Bayaim. Depends. If the bris is on time, then it needs to be done, done by day. If it's, uh, if it's not on time, there was a delay in the bris, and then nimulim b'yem of and it could be by day or by night. The Gemara suggests that my love b'hakamifligi. Maybe the machlekes is regarding the following. The mar savar mashach deiraisa, the mar savar mashach derabonon. Yeah, we're playing with this a little bit, because the machlekes rabbi lazar bar shimon in the Tanakama was really about cut and shovers money. If the bris wasn't done by on, on the right time, Tanakama says it doesn't matter, it needs to be by day. And Rabbi Elizabeth Shimon says, no, you already entered into a different category of a bris once it's delayed. And it's a different, uh, um, different severity. And now the bris could be done by day or by night. It's like a, not the original biblical law. So we're thinking that that category, that it's not the original biblical law, that would apply to everything in that, in the, in that uh, case, which is Mashuch and Neilik Shumal and Gershon Eskayik Shumal and someone that has two Arlas, all of them go into the category of that it's not the original biblical law. We think that this is going to be a Machlekes Tanayim if... Um, if it's a, a, a biblical law that the, someone whose, force, whose skin was stretched to look like foreskin, if he needs to have a circumcision. The Gemara says, Vitizbra, you, you can't say what you're saying. Do you really think that cotton shovers manai, a child, that the time for the bris, time for the circumcision has passed? Does anyone hold that his circumcision is now only a rabbinic law? 
because he missed the time. It wasn't the eighth day, they're doing it the ninth day. Are you telling me that now it's not a, a biblical mitzvah, it's only a rabbinic? Ella, rather, we have a machlekes over here. If it needs to be done by day, that has nothing to do with if it's biblical or rabbinic. The kuli alma mashach is the rabbanan. Really, when it comes to mashach, if the skin is stretched to look like foreskin, that's only a rabbinic law. Like Rav Huna said, the cotton shavers mana raisa. In that case, that case of cotton shavers mana, that's clearly a deraisa. So why why do we have two opinions? If the if the day the date of the circumcision, the eighth day, has passed. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. I just feel I made a mistake. I brought the wrong uh, huh? car. Okay. Okay. So, um, Marsavar, Marsavar Dashinan Bayaim, Marsavar Lay Dashinan Bayaim. What volume, what number volume is that? 15. Volume 15. It has a, sh- it has a shoe on it. Yeah. Right there. No, take it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What page? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. So there's a word by it says hashmini and on the eighth day. What is the and on the eighth day? It's coming to tell me that. Not only if it's on the eighth day is it the bris done by day, but even if it's not on the eighth day, it's also done by day. Page 24 in the beginning. Oh, you use the Hebrew. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. Back Hebrew. Okay. Page 24 on that. So the I question if a, if a bris uh, uh, that's delayed, if it's done by day, right now the way we're learning it is it has to do if we Take a, if we take the vav of ubayim, and we say that that's adding an extra case. It says ubayim ashmini, and on the eighth day it means not only if it's on the eighth day is it done by day, but even other days it's also done by day. And as the day, as in daytime, as opposed to nighttime. Right? We learn that the bris needs to be done by day; it can't be done by night. But what? The, but it says on the eighth day. Maybe it's only if it's the eighth. We say no, and on the eighth. That means even if it's not on the eighth, it's still done by day. So that would be a machlekas where Rabbi Lazar Bar Shimon doesn't hold of that. Okay. Kiha the Yasiv Rabbi Yechanan Rekadarish. Rabbi Yechanan was sitting and teaching. Nicer. Nicer is what's left over from a sacrifice. Top of the page. You see it on the top? Page 24. Yeah, on the first line. Rabbi, I just from you and I got it. Okay. On the top. Yeah, on the top. The top line. On the top one. Yeah. You said right. Oh, okay. nicer, which means left over from a sacrifice. Yeah. Bismani, if it's on the day that it was left over, ain't a It has to be burnt by day. Shalay bismani, if it well, you delayed burning it, not only did you delay eating it, but you delayed burning it also. The nisra fein bayim u bein balayla. Then it could be burnt by day or by night. Yeah, it says Bayim Hashlishi. Hanaisar Mimeno Bayim Hashlishi Baisti Sarif. What's left over to the third day is burnt. Um, is burnt only is burnt by day. It needs to be burnt during the day. Okay. Kadarish. Darish means to teach, a, a drasha. And ka is a um, participle, whatever they call that. The Isri Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yechnan. Rabbi Lazar has a question to Rabbi Yechnan. He says, Aimli ala nima lishmini, she aimli ala nima lishmini, she aimli ala nima lishmini, ala nima lishmini, ala nima lishmini, ala nima um, maybe the word minayan is there. Tamalaymer ubayayim. Yeah, 
So Rebbe Lazar, this is Rebbe Lazar ben Kedas. He was a uh, student in Chavrusa of Rebbe Yechner. This is, these are uh, Amiraim. So Rabbi Yechanan just says that Naisar is burnt by day only if it's on the third day after the sacrifice is supposed to be eaten. It's supposed to be eaten the first and second. The first and second day. You have two days to eat it. The third day it's burnt. But if you didn't burn it on the third day, you're burning it on the fourth day. Rabbi Yechanan says then you can already burn it by night. It doesn't have to be by day. Rabbi Lohan says one second. When it comes to a bris, it says the bris needs to be on the eighth day. And it needs to be done during the day. How do I know that if the bris is going to be done on the ninth day? Now, how would I have a bris done on the ninth day? Well, if the baby was born, so then I don't do it on the day, um, the earlier day. Later is better than early. So I push it off to the next day. I consider it born, you know, of a uh, Shabbos or something, or a Sunday, no, Sunday night, I don't know if it was born on Sunday or born on Monday. So the following week, the bris is going to be on Sunday or on Monday. We'll do it on Monday. Because it could be it was born Monday. If it was born Monday and I do it on Sunday, that's a problem. So you do it the day later. Later is at least a kosher bris. If it's done earlier, I probably have to take blood again. It's not considered anything. Then... Um, how do you have a bris on the 10th day? Well, let's say it was Arab Shabbos. Friday afternoon. The baby's born Ben Hashemashas. I don't know if he's born Friday or born Shabbos. So if he's born on Shabbos, then I do a bris on Shabbos. But if it wasn't Shabbos, then I would do it. Uh, if I do it on Shabbos, that's a biblical prohibition. It's a violation of Shabbos. So I can't do the bris on on Friday, because could be it was Shabbos, and I always have to do the later time. So I'm going to do on Shabbos, but I can't do on Shabbos because could be it's uh, it wasn't born on Shabbos on Friday. So I'm going to have to do the bris on Sunday. So that's going to be ten days, ten days from Friday. And then what about the eleventh uh, day and the twelfth day? This would have to do is the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Basically, you can this can. Uh, if you have a two-day holiday and you still have that same doubt, so you're gonna have to push it off till uh, till um, tw twelve to till four days later, till the twelfth day. Okay. When I do the bris on on the twelfth day, or the eleventh, or the tenth, or the ninth, when do I have to do the bris? Or Abelosa says it has to be done by day as well. So what are you telling me? What are you telling me? Rabbi Rabbi is asking Rabbi Yechonan that if you're burning the fats of the uh, sacrifice on the wrong day, no, not the fats, the, the meat, if you didn't eat the meat on the proper time, and now you have to burn it, it's called nicer, that, you, that if you're doing it on time, then you do it by day, but if it's not on time, then you do it, you can do it by night, by the bris, even if it's not on time, you do it by day. I know there's an opinion that says, that didn't learn the Vav of Bayaim Hashmini. And he said that a bris that's not on time is allowed to be done by night. But when it comes to Naisar, but Vav He Darish, he doesn't Darsh in a Vav, but he Darsh in Vav He, which is Viha Naisar. Over there, he's for sure going to agree that it needs to be done by day. He doesn't dash in above, but he dash in above. Hey. Okay. He's asking Rabbi Yechanan that Lachera needs to, the Naisa needs to always be burnt by day, never by night. Okay, Ishtik, Rabbi Yechanan's quiet. Usually, Ishtik means that he is accepting it. Now, what's surprising over here is that. Um, uh, when Rish Lakish passed away and Rabbi Yechanan was looking for a new chavrus and he took Rabbi Lazar, he was complaining that Rabbi Lazar did not ask him questions. He said, uh, you're just telling me proofs. I don't, and you're proving that I'm right. And he says, right, I, I, mean, I know that I'm right. But here we see, we're finding that he's asking him such a good question that he doesn't know the answer. Yeah. Doesn't fit with that. Uh, that this was a different instance. Different, uh, different time. So Basid the Nafik after Rabbi Lazar left, Amalei Rabbi Yechonel Rish Lakish, 
Rabbi tells the Rish Lakish, Risili le Ben Pedas, Yesh Bedersh Kamashim Pia Gvura. Ben Pedas, wow, what a speech he just gave. He gave a drush over here, like as if he's a Tana. He said, Minayan le Rabbi Tisha, sorry, he brought in a, a whole limud over here that usually Amarayim were not uh, accustomed to doing. This was like, like something that Tanayim would do, as if he's, uh, as, as if he's Maisha that's hearing it straight from Hashem. Amalei Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish says, Didehi, you thought that was his own uh, statement? That was Masnisi, that was a Braisa. He says, Hecha Tanalei. He says, where's that Braisa? I don't know that Braisa. He says, Beteris Kayanim. That's the Braisa that's called Teres Kayanim. It's the, we call it the Sifra. It's the, um, it's the Medrash, the Halachic Medrash on Sefer Vayikra. So, Nafak, Rabbi Yechonin goes out, Tanya Betlasa Yaimi. He learned the whole Teres Kainim in three days. Besavra Betlasa Yarchi. And then he thought about it for three months and he mastered the, uh, the Teres Kainim. Yeah, we call it Sifra de Beirav. Now, my, my son was telling me last night that the Beirav, I always thought the Beirav meant the house of Rav. He was telling me that it just means the academy. And Rav is not the person's name. It just means a teacher. The Beirav, the house of the teacher, which just means any school. I'm not sure if that's correct. He was telling me that he saw in a translation that, that the Beirav meant the academy. I, I have to match. I have to see if there's Gemaras when it says Tana de Beirav, if that... If the Gemara ever contrasts that to a statement, another statement of Rav, or if that it or if that's meaningless, it, it doesn't. It's not necessarily Rav. It could be anyone. Anyway, okay. So um, when it says Sifra de Bey Rav, what does that have to do? Does it really have to do with Rav? <laughs> anyway, I'm Rabbi So we have a new uh, statement now. Aral Shehiza, someone that was not circumcised that sprinkles the paraduma water on someone else. We had, we had a discussion before. Can a person that's an aral have the para, water of the paraduma sprinkled on him? He was tummy mace. Can he become pure? Can he become pure even though he's really tummy as an aral? An aral is like a quasi tumma. So can we, con do we do we consider him that he's able to become pure from, from a corpse, even though he still has the foreskin? That was a question before. Now we're saying someone with a foreskin, is he allowed to sprinkle on someone else? It says Hazasik Shera. Yeah, he is allowed to. It's kosher. Just like a Tvulyayim. Tvulyayim is someone that was Tame, that went to the mikvah that's waiting for nightfall to be able to eat the truma. They say that he's not allowed to eat truma yet because it's still in the middle of the day, but he's allowed to sprinkle the water of the paraduma. Yeah, this is the first mission in Brachas, that he has to wait with a kain in my night, I have to wait for nightfall to eat the truma. That's, uh, but what is he allowed to, to, to do during the day? He is allowed to, he's called a Tvul Yaim. He went to the mikveh by day. He has to wait for the evening to become totally pure. But he's allowed to sprinkle the water of the paraduma. This was a whole discussion. We'll see between the, um, was it the uh, Tzedukim or the Baitusim? That they held that, he, that a Tvul Yaim was not allowed to, to touch the paraduma water. Yeah. But that was regarding the uh, the making of the tful, of the paraduma the, the the process. Here we're just talking about one instance of sprinkling. Okay, um, the Gemara says malatul yaim shekain mutaber meiser. We have a question. We just did a comparison here. Comparison was someone that's not um, not circumcised, 
you said he can sprinkle the water of the paraduma on someone else. Well, we'll compare him to a tzvul yayim. This person that wasn't circumcised is not allowed to eat shuma. The tzvul yayim is not allowed to eat shuma. Just like the tzvul yayim is allowed to sprinkle, so to the one that wasn't circumcised is allowed to sprinkle. That's our comparison, and that's how we get this halacha. Where it says it's not a good comparison, because a tzvul yayim is allowed to eat meiser. But an oral, we're, saying, we're suggesting now, is not allowed to eat meiser. What Meiser? Meiser Shani we're talking about. How do we know that an Earl can eat Meiser? I think we have to wait. We'll see that later. Um, the Gemara says you're, you're mixing up this comparison. Yeah, see, that's the big deal here. What, what, is, what does the Gemara do like 50% of the time? It makes comparisons. Is this similar to this? And like we have to figure out how the, how the law should be. How do we figure that out? Well, we know of another law. So is it right to compare the two? That's, uh, so we're saying, what are you comparing? You're comparing an RL uncircumcised to a Tzvul Yom. But in what aspect are you comparing them? You're comparing them about sprinkling the, the water, the Paraduma, and you've made it a comparison that since both of them are forbidden for Truma, we're thinking both of them are forbidden to eat shuma, so too both of them should be allowed to sprinkle the water of the paraduma. And we said, but one second, one of them is forbidden to have miser. So now it messes up that comparison. Which one? The uh, the oral is forbidden to miser. Okay, so the Gemara says like this. We weren't talking about the eating of the truma. We were talking about the touching of the truma. And now, if both of them are not allowed to touch truma, but nevertheless, there are, one of them is allowed to, to sprinkle the paraduma, so too the other one is allowed to sprinkle the paraduma. And you're going to throw in miser? Regarding miser, they're allowed to touch it. It was only the eating it that the oral was also. If a tzvul yayim is not allowed to eat, touch truma, but he's allowed to sprinkle the paraduma water, so the aral also, that he is allowed to touch the aral, that's allowed to touch the truma. It's, now, now it turned into a kalvachimer, not just a comparison. He's allowed to touch the truma, which is even more than the tzvul yayim, in a din shemotabar, for sure should, he should be allowed to sprinkle the water of the paraduma. Statement of Rabbi Lazar, it seems to be uh, accurate that an oral can sprinkle. Tani nami hachi, oral shehiza azasik sheira, umaisa haya vechshir chacham azasi. Okay, we even have a b'risa that says this, and the b'risa says we have a story, and the, and the rabbis accepted it. Meisrei, there's a question on this. Tumtum shekidesh. Someone that the gender is, is uh, not clear. He's a male or female. Because there's like a skin that's covering it over. Can't tell. Kiddush means not that he married someone. Kiddush means that he mixed the water with the ashes of the paraduma. All right. It says, Kiddush a puzzle. It's puzzle. Mipnei shehu safagarol. Because he may be an oral. Why, if he's a male, which we'll find out maybe later, then he needed to have a bris. And the oral pasal a kiddush, and an oral cannot mix the water at the uh... right away. We are already seeing we have a problem here because Rabbi Lazar just told us that an oral is allowed to sprinkle the water. Now the mixing of the water with the ashes, which assuming it's the same uh, same halacha, is problematic for an oral. But an dragon is a kiddush. Andragonous and androgynous, someone that has both genders. So he is allowed to, but obviously the male part was he was circumcised, or else we're back to our old problem. Okay. Uh Andragonous Shakidish, Kedusha Kasher. That's going to be Kasher. Rabbi Daimer, Af Andragonous Shakidish, Kedusha Psulam Pnesha Safak Isha. We don't know, he may be a woman. And the Isha Psulam Ilakadish. A woman is not allowed to. 
to uh, mix the water with the ashes, mix ashes with the water. Ketanimiya, nevertheless, we, we, uh, we learned Arol Vesafik Arol Pasul Milakadesh. It's a problem. It's a question of Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Lazar said that this was totally permissible. Am Rav Yasev, Hai Tana, Tana Debe Rabbi Akiva, who the Brisa that you just brought is really the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, the Marbi Leila Arul Ketami, that he holds that someone that's not circumcised, it's as if he's tummy. The Tanya was taught in a Brisa. We had this in the beginning of the, of the Perak. Rabbi Kivaimer, Ishish, Larabi Sesa Arul. When we were discussing someone that wasn't circumcised, if he's allowed to eat Truma, We had two sources. One was a source from the carbon Pesach. We said that if you can't eat the carbon Pesach, you also can't have Chuma. Where did we learn that? It says Sacher Vitaishav. It was Xer Shava. It says Sacher Vitaishav here. It says Sacher Vitaishav there. Right? We learned that uh, it's the same halach. And then Rabbi Kiva says, Oh, I don't need that whole Xer Shava. It says that who's not allowed to eat Chuma, called Tzeru Avachol Zav or something, is not allowed to eat Chuma. Um, and it says Ish Ish. Right? It says ish ish, a man, a man. And it says that the extra uh, ish is coming to teach me someone that wasn't circumcised is not is similar to someone that's tummy. So Rabbi Akiva basically holds that someone that's tummy, someone that's uncircumcised is like his tummy. So if that's the case, that someone that's not circumcised is tummy, so then he also can't mix the water of the paraduma because he's tummy. So Rabbi Akiva has this very strict view about an uncircumcised person. That he's tummy. I'm a, I'm a Rava. Rava says, Have you seen the Kamid Rabbi Yasef? I was sitting in front of Rabbi Yasef. Rabbi Yasef was the teacher of Abai and Rava. But casually, I had a question. It says, Loyla Stamit Tana. Stamit means to leave out. It's not, it's, there's, a, there's no Tana that. That left out Belisni and taught Ha'aral Vatame, Velema Rabbi Akiva. We shouldn't have all the Tanayim leaving out such a thing. Was, all the time we have rules about someone that touches something that he was Tame, he touched it, it becomes Tame. Where's the Brysis, according to Rabbi Akiva, that would say Ha'aral Vatame? That the oral, the person that wasn't circumcised, should be making, should be making things tummy. We don't have any brises or mishnas that say that. We we should have at least one. And I was looking for like some evidence of Rabbi Akiva actually holding that an oral is tummy. Show me some brisa that says that, and then we would say, well, who holds that? We would say, oh, that's Rabbi Akiva. We don't find that uh, any brisa that says that. Is this Rava or Rava? In my Gemara, it says Rava. It says Rava, but it is, uh, I said that he's a student of, of Rabbi Yosef. Now, Abaya is clearly a student of Rabbi Yosef, and Rava was around over there. Yeah, Abaya always said. They were both students of Rava. Yeah, they were both students of Rabbi Yehuda. No, okay. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Look on the side. Next to Rava, there has to be a Rabbi Yosef there. Yeah. Okay. And who's under Rabbi Yosef, anyone? Abaya. Okay, and Rava is next to Abaya, right? right. Yeah. So, Abaya... I'm sorry, was... I'm, I'm sorry I'm not there to control him. I apologize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, we don't have usually Rava and Rabbi Yosef um, communicating. We usually have Abaya and Rabbi Yosef communicating. Here, it's Rava is in front of Rabbi Yosef. It happened. <laughs> Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, like, uh, we have to think of an example. Oh, Svarim, that's Svarim are tummy. Well, we have it says Yadayim or Shniyas or Svarim are tummy. We forget where it is in Shabbos, and I think at the beginning of Sahar. Yeah, yeah. You're looking that if this is going to be our standard of evidence, then we have to hold this up to other cases as well. 
we'd have they have to do a lot of research to see them <laughs> uh, cute <laughs> it's he's showing me a picture of the uh, advertising on the top of uh, a bus <laughs> says i love new york okay um what does this have to do why did why did rova have to tell me that it's being said in front of Rabbi Yosef. I'm not sure. Maybe because Rabbi Yosef is the one that's responding here. Veloy, you don't have a uh, any brises and mishnayos that say that. Vaktani tami says that when it comes to bringing the carbon chagiga, or the not the chag, in mesechtas chagiga, the oilas ria, or maybe it's oil regal. We had a discussion over there. Um, that someone that's tame is exempt from being oil regal. And also, an RL is exempt. Why? Well, the Gemara is thinking that's probably because they're both coming. <coughs> you see, we have a Brisa that puts the two together, or a Mishnah that puts the two together. And what are the chances you're going to have somebody involved with an RO? Right. I wouldn't necessarily expect to see a price because it was yeah, so rare event. Other things that I meant by what I meant were not rare events. Right. Common. You'd expect to watch some learning about this. Right. So what Rav is doing is he's, if Rabbi Akiva holds that an RL is like a Tame across the board, so then why don't why aren't there any brises or mishnayas that say even touching uh, anything not just the paraduma paraduma is rare but the but everything was becoming tame everything was a, it should have had oral tame and something oral tame that sat on a you know a thing and touched them you know okay we said well we do have it says oral and tame are are uh, pater from ria probably because they're both tame it's probably the opinion of rabbi akiva it says, no, Hasim Yishem de Mayas. Over there, it's because it's Mayas. It's uh, disgusting. Everyone holds that a, 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 um, an Aral doesn't, doesn't go to the base of Migdash. Is that really the way we learned it over there? Because it was Mayas? I thought we had some other reasons. I don't know. Okay. How do we know when he shows up that he's uh, dressed different than the guy that dresses? No, it's, it's asking about the guy himself. Should he go? He says, no, he doesn't go. He's, he lives in. Sounds like other people are yeah, maybe because the walk together. Yeah, it could be people now. Uh huh. I hear what he's saying. Now we're saying that the Tanakama in Rabbi Yehuda that had this discussion before about um, an Andragonus, about a woman, if she's allowed to um, mix the water of the Paraduma with the, with the water, with the, uh, the ashes of the Paraduma with the water, that's actually a, another Machlaikis. The Tanya was taught in a Braisa, Kol Kshem Lekadosh. Everyone is acceptable to mix the ashes with the water. Chutz mecher shaitivikatan, except for a deaf mute, an imbecile, and a child. Rabbi the Machshe Bekatan. Rabbi the says a child is allowed, but to paisel be isha bandragnes, but not a woman in andragnes. My time at the rabbanon. Why did the rabbis say that you can't use a child? It says the ksiv v'lach cholatami me'afar streifas achatas. The um, they take for the one that's not pure, the impure, from the ashes of the burning of the uh, animal. Hanach de pasli baasifa psulim bekidish. If the person wasn't allowed to gather the ashes, then he's also not allowed to mix them with water. There's two steps here. They take the ashes and then they mix it with water. Who takes the ashes? 
Well, over there it says, Va'asaf ish tahar. The pure man takes the ashes and then they take it and they mix it with water. So who was allowed to gather the ashes? A pure man. Pure man means not a child. It says ish. Ish for like cotton. So only someone that was kosher to do the gathering is allowed to do the Kiddush. What does Rabbi Yehuda do? He says that a child is allowed to do the Kiddush. Amalach and Kenemakra Velakach. What is it? It has a plural, Velakhu. And they take, we're talking about the mixing it with water. It's my Velakhu. What does it mean, they take? Even those that were not allowed to do the gathering, which is referring to the child, but they're allowed to mix it with water. So Rabbi Yehuda has a special limud. The they on the on the uh, the suffix, the lakhu, they take. That's coming to include what was not allowed. Those that were not allowed to do the gathering. Okay. Gemara says, yishanami. So then, why do you just exclude a woman? Rabbi that says a woman can't do it, or an antagonist says vinasan. Says and he place it. Mayim chaim al keli vinas bakal What's the end of the? Venasa nalof mayim chayim malkeli, and he and uh, he places. It says he places. Veloy venasna and not she places. So we have an exclusion of a woman. No, it's not really an exclusion. It's really just an extra pasuk. Um, why? Because the whole Torah is written in um, masculine. We never say, we never have the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the thing, he, she, the, with the, what's it called? What's the, that line called? The slash? We never have the slash. <laughs> the Torah doesn't do that for us. <laughs> no, yeah, so it just says it in a masculine and it's uh, assumed that it applies to the women as well. So when it says Vinasan, oh, you're telling, well, you're going to tell me that it has to be a, a man and not a woman? What about the rest of the Torah, where it doesn't say uh, in a in a in a feminine, uh, you know, the gender? So, Taisa says, well, it's really just the. Um, it didn't have to say it at all. Taisa points us out. It's just an extra pasuk. It says Vinasan, where it didn't need to say it. So that's telling me that it needs to be a a man. Where Abanan? What do the Rabbanan do? They have the word Velakhu, they take. Rabbi Yehuda tells us that that's coming to include someone that was prohibited to do the gathering. What are you suggesting? You wanted to say Velakach? Venasan, and then to place? I could have thought that it's the same person that does the um, gathering. That's the one that has to do the mixing. So therefore, it says velakhu that it doesn't have to be the same. Because Rahman of velakhu vinasnu, you're suggesting that you want it to be both in plural. Havamina the shakal trevi avi trei. I would think that two people need to do both. Because Rahman of velakhu vinasan the filo shakal trevi avichad. Coming to tell me that it could be two people took the ashes and one person can add the water that that's going to be acceptable. Okay. So they use they use velakhu as well for to teach me uh, who's involved in here. But they don't have to tell me that it's coming to include the people that were forbidden to do the gathering. Okay, we have a new piece. Vihiza tar alatame. And the one that's pure will sprinkle on the one that's not pure. When we say the one that's pure, tahar michlal shu tame. When you say that he's pure, we're saying that he's pure for this. Not pure for something else. Not pure for something else. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're getting that <laughs> from the word pure. <coughs> but what we're saying is, <laughs> coming to tell us what we mentioned before, that a tful yoim is acceptable to do the, the uh, preparation of the paraduma. Tar kaldahu, he's slightly tar. Even though, how, who is it for yom? Someone that went to the mikveh, but he has to wait for nightfall, and he's tar. 
that's good enough. Even though he didn't, uh, even though the nightfall didn't come yet, he still can do the the uh, preparation of the para. Okay. Boy, my name is Rav Sheshes. Oral mahu b'maiser. They asked Rav Sheshes the following question: Someone that's an oral, he's uncircumcised for whatever reason. Is he allowed to eat meiser? Now, meiser is referring to here as meiser sheni. It's brought to Yerushalayim. It's supposed to be eaten um, in purity. And it's supposed to be used for food. You know, that, that if it could be redeemed, and then the, that money is, is it's for food. But let's say there's someone there in Yerushalayim that's an oral. Is he allowed to eat the meiser? We say, we, they explain their question. It says that if someone is an oinin, he's in an intense state of mourning, he's not allowed to eat meiser. He has to eat it more with, uh, with joyfully. So we say that just like an oinin is not allowed to eat meiser, so too um, yeah, uh, a, a carbon Pesach, person can't bring the carbon Pesach if he's an oinin. Because it doesn't say that by the carbon Pesach, but we learn it from Misa. So if we compare Misa to carbon Pesach, so maybe we should go back the other way and say, Yalaf Nami Misa Mi Pesach, Linian Arlas, 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 Arlas. Well, how do they write it over there? What's the vowel in the Hebrew? Arlas. Okay. Okay. In the, in, the, in the vowels, in the Hebrew, they write Arelis. So maybe we should learn carbon Pesach to Meiser regarding Arelis. That just like a someone that's an Arl is not allowed to bring a carbon Pesach, so too he's not allowed to eat the Meiser. Oidilma, or maybe Chamer Mikal Yalef, Kal Mechamer La Yalef. Maybe this doesn't work like that. It only works one way that Meiser was more lenient, Pesach is more strict. I had a rule by Meiser that an Oinen is not allowed to eat Meiser. We said, well, that's such a lenient rule. And a carbon Pesach is much stricter. If an Oinen isn't allowed to eat Meiser, it's for sure not allowed to bring the carbon Pesach. But to go the other way and say, carbon Pesach, you're not allowed to be an Oral. So too Meiser, you're not allowed to be an Oral. What? Meiser is much more lenient. You can't go that way. That's our question. Omar <coughs> Lahu, Rav Shesis responded. Tanisua, we have a Bryson. It says, maybe it's Mishnah. Hatruma Babikurim Chayavim Naleim Misa Vachemesh Basrum Lazarim Beinach Zikain Vailim Bechan Meir Tuner Rachitz Yadaim Herav Shemer Shirele Bechum Bikur Mashenkin B'Maiser. The Misa Nisni Aralaser Beam Mashenkin B'Maiser. We have a list over here that compares Truma and Bikurim and contrasts it to Meiser. One of the things that, that's missing from this, um, from this Mishnah is that oral, it doesn't say that an oral is acceptable to, to it's acceptable for an oral to eat Meiser. The fact that that's missing is a proof that an oral is allowed to, is allowed to have Meiser. Uh, is it, that Arl is not allowed to have Meiser because we're going to say that why didn't it give us that contrast? Because there is no contrast. The same rule of Truma is going to apply to Meiser. So what, are the, what is the com- comparison and the contrast? We say Truma and Bikurim is the same that both of them are Chayav and Aleim Misa. Let me go back over this. If someone's Tomei and he eats Truma or Bikurim, so it says he's Chayav Misa Bidei Shemayim, the death penalty from heaven. Can't have truma uh, when he's tummy. Chaymesh, if he's not a kayan and he has truma or bikurim, he has to pay an extra fifth. Now, so far, these are two things that don't apply to, to Miser. Truma and bikurim, yes. He has to be um, tahar. He has to be tar, but Miser, he doesn't have to be tar. And the same is with the czar, someone that's not a kayan. If he eats truma or bikurim, he has to pay for what he ate, plus an extra piv. But miser, a czar is allowed to eat miser. doesn't have to be a kayan. This is miser sheni. This is every person would take their produce to Yerushalayim and eat it there. He doesn't have to be a kayan. Basrum lazarim. 
Truma and Bikurim is not allowed to be fed to someone that's not a Kayan or a Levi. But this is allowed to. Another point is that Truma and Bikurim belong to the Kayan to the extent that if he wants to marry a woman, he can take this money and he can give it to her and say, you're married to me with this uh, money or produce or whatever. It's his. Meiser, according to the opinion of Reb Meir, Meiser doesn't really belong to the person in Yerushalayim. It's really mom and Gavaya, belongs to Hashem. But he's allowed to eat it for, uh, use it for his food. So just like um, things that you're allowed to eat doesn't mean that it's yours. You go to a party, they serve you, uh, I don't know, whatever, a wedding or a bar mitzvah. They serve you a dinner. So you can't start taking the stuff home. So we gave it to you to eat. So what do you mean? It's mine. Said, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's here for the party. It's uh, keep it here. And you can't, it's not, it's not yours. So the miser. It's there for you to eat, but it's not yours. So you can't take it and marry a woman with it and say that, what do you mean? I can do anything with it. It's not how it works. That's her mayor's view. So that's a, a contrast to Truman Bikurim, which actually belongs to the Kayan. Va'ilam Becher of Meir. Truman Bikurim becomes Batal one in a hundred, but Meiser is Batal Beroif. Batal in a majority. Batal means nullified. It gets mixed into a, in a mixture. So how much, what's the ratio that it becomes nullified? So Chumim Bikurim is one in a hundred. And uh, Meiser is majority. Utunur Chitzis Yadayim, to wash the hands beforehand. But Meiser is the same like Chulin. You don't have to wash your hands for, for, uh, for the fruits. If you're having bread, of course, you have to wash your hands. But for the fruits, you don't have to. And Shuma, you have to wash your hands even for fruits. Beher of Shemesh. And Chum and Bikurim, you have to wait for nightfall before if the person goes to the mikveh. Because he was tummy, he has to wait for nightfall before he can eat it. So all of this is a rail of Chum and Bikurim, Mashen can be Meiser, which is, doesn't apply to Meiser. The Imisa, back to our question. And if uh, Aurel is allowed to eat Meiser, Nisni Aurel Asr Behem, Mashen can be Meiser. We should say that I know an Aurel is not allowed to eat Chuma. And Bikurim has the same rule as Chuma. Uh, however, an Aurel is allowed to have Meiser. It didn't say that. <laughs> From the fact that it didn't say that, that teaches me that an Aurel is really not allowed to have Meiser. The Gemara says that's not a proof. Ton of Ishaya. It wasn't an exhaustive uh, list. Uh, we, we left out some things. The fact that it didn't say it doesn't prove anything. The Gemara doesn't like when it leaves out one item. It says, prove it to me that it was really not an exhaustive uh, list. It says, my Shire, the high Shire. What else did it leave out? That you're going to tell me that don't take this so uh, serious, and it left out this as well. So it says sheer the my shaya the high shaya, sheer the katani sefa. It left out things in the in the in the end. Yesh be meiser bikurim, mashenkin betruma. When it came to meiser, we compare meiser to bikurim, and we contrast meiser and bikurim to truma. How does that work? Shameiser va bikurim tun nava smak, and both of those need to be brought from one location to another location. To Yerushalayim or to the base of Migdash. Tunin Vidoy. There's a, um, a paragraph that needs to be read for, with the Meiser or with the, or with the Bikurim. Vasalainen. And an Ainen is not allowed to have Meiser, that we said clearly. We also mentioned the Kurban Pesach, but not Truma. Truma, an Ainen is allowed to have Truma. Where did we not learn that from? Lazar Vlaylainen, right? Also Lazar Vlaylainen. We had a Bechalzar Layechalbai. Kalzar, but not a night without we had the Gemara before. For Rab Shimon Mater. And Rab Shimon allows an Ainen for Bikurim. Can't be for Meiser because that's clear in the Pasuk. For Bikurim, Rab Shimon allows it. Meiser Shani, yeah. So does that mean? He can't give it at all, the person who's not allowed to eat it. That he all of a sudden he loses the chiyav to give Master Shani. No, he's, he's taking Master Shani. But he, someone he, else has to. Eat. Yeah, he takes it to Yerushalayim. He can't eat it until he becomes whatever state that oh, he is. So or someone Master else. Master Shani has. is in a, step, in a kind of waiting status. Yeah, or, or, or his family could eat it. Yeah, anyone can eat it. 
can invite people. So, v'chayavim bebir. And there's also an obligation to, after the third year, it's called beer meisers. If he, if he was holding the meiser for the first year, the second year, he has to take it out of the house at a certain point. And the same thing is for bikurim, that you can't hold it. You have to, you have to take it out. Uh, 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 Reb Shimon Paita. Reb Shimon says bikurim doesn't have the concept of beer. Okay. Ve'ilu asr levar mehem betuma ve'oichlin betuma satzman loike Mashenkin betuma like Tani alma Tana v'shayef. What we're trying to do here, we're trying to say that this was not an exhaustive list, and we have things that we left out. Well, what did we leave out? We left out <coughs> that when it comes to truma, you're allowed to burn truma that's tummy. For example, if oil became tummy, truma oil became tummy, you're allowed to use it in the lamp. You're just not allowed to eat it. However, miser, if it becomes tame, you're not allowed to burn it. You can't use it. You can't destroy it with, and you have benefit from its burning. It's only a special uh, rule that by, by truma that you're allowed to. Now, it could have said that, that miser and bikurim is different than truma because it's making this contrast comparison Maisa to Bikurim and to contrast it to Truma. It didn't do that. Another point is that it could have said that if the person if the person is Tame, then he's not allowed to have Truma. I know that. But if the food is Tame, if the food is Tame, so then there's Malkus for Maisa and Bikurim if he eats it, but there's no Malkus if, he, if the someone eats tummy, tummy truma. Why? Because that's brought to us, we know that law from a positive command that he's supposed to eat it in purity. But it's not a negative command that he can't eat. So Malchus lashes is only, uh, only um, comes if it's a negative command, thou shall not. And we don't have that for truma. So we could have done another contrast. We didn't do that. You see? Like uh, Alma, Tana Vishai, you see we left out. It's not an exhaustive list. So the, uh, the, the, the response of Rav Sheshis, that because we have a Mishnah that didn't say something, we say that's, a, that's not a, a, a full answer because that wasn't an exhaustive list. We have other things that it left out as well. Okay. We're, this is a big discussion on the chapter. The, the, the title here is Ha'aral. I don't know what it has to do with Yivamas. I, I don't know how it, that, got, that got in here. But we're, we're basically learning about someone that's, on, that's not circumcised. And the, it was introduced to us that he can't eat truma. And then we take it further to what about if the, for, if the skin was stretched? And now we're talking about what about miser? You know, can he eat miser? And um, it, because of all these things, we get to start discussing a lot of topics. Okay, we're on Ayin Gimel Amid Beis. One of the things that we mentioned over here was a surim la'inen, Reb Shimon Mata. Someone that's in an intense state of mourning is not allowed to eat the miser that's brought to Yerushalayim. Same applies to Bikurim. But Reb Shimon allows Bikurim to be eaten in an intense state of mourning. Minolahu, where do the rabbis know this from? What's that base? Master taught Chumas Yedecha Ela Bikurim. It says that you should not eat in your gates, that means in your cities, the Miser and the Truma. What do you mean the Truma? It says that doesn't really mean Truma, that means the Bikurim. The Bikurim needs to be brought to, to the base of English. The Iskash Bikurim La Miser. Now there's a comparison here between Bikurim, the first fruits, that need to be brought to the base of English. 
and the Meiser and the tithe that needs to be brought to your Shalayim. Ma Meiser as a just like by Meiser, we know that an, uh, an Einan isn't allowed to have Meiser. Why? Because in the statement that the, that the person says, when he brings the Meiser, he says, I did not eat from this in, in uh, Ba'ini. When I was an when I was uh, Ainan. So Af Bikurim Asalainan. So Bikurim is uh, has the same status because there's a comparison between Mice and Bikurim. So if that's the case, so what about Rab Shimon? He says Bikurim, you're allowed to a person is allowed to eat in an intense state of mourning. Rab Shimon, Shuma Karina Rahmana Machum Terslain Af Bikurim Matalainan. Shimon says, No, what is the word that's used for Bikurim here? Shumas Yadecha. So it's comparing it to truma. Truma, an Ainan is allowed to eat. Someone that's mourning can't say that he uh, can't have truma. He's a Kayan. He's allowed to have the truma. So, so to Bikurim, he's allowed to, he's allowed to eat even if he's in an intense state of mourning. Now we say Vachayovim Babir. It has to be removed at a certain point from the house. Rab Shimon Paita, Rab Shimon says that Bikurim don't. It says Mar Makish, Mar Lay Makish. Question is, do we compare it to Meiser or not? Tanakam already compared it to Meiser and, it, and the Reb Shimon doesn't. Okay, then we said, now we're, this is interesting. Now we're, we're, we're not even discussing the Brysa anymore. Now we're saying what the Brysa left out and we're discussing how we know the source for that. Those items that, the, that uh, they claim to Reb Sheshis that were left out how do we know that that's actually the halacha? The Tanya was taught in a brisa. Reb Shimon Aimer, lay biarti mi men in betamik. I did not consume it while I was impure. This is talking about the miser. Bein shani tamei vehutar, bein shani tar vehutamei. I didn't consume this miser, whether I was tamei and the food was tahar, or whether the food was tamei and I was tar. Vehicha muzar ala chilasa yeni yedaya. Where was he compared? We, we, I'm sorry, where was he warned, um, told not to eat it? The Gemara says, we don't know. Now, what are we talking about? The Gemara is going to explain. What do you mean? If he's Tame, I know he's not allowed to eat it. He can't eat the Meiser when he's Tame. Why? Because it says, It says, anyone that touches something that's Tuma, he has to wait until uh, his tummy until evening, um, and he can't eat from the kachim unless he washes his flesh in water. Uh, and what does that mean? What is kachim? I guess kachim over here means miser. Kachim over here means miser. So we know that if he's tummy, he can't eat it. So the Gemara says, "Well, hachi kami baile tumas atzmai minayin." I know if he's tummy, he can't eat the miser. But what about if the miser's tummy? Is he allowed in his tar? Is he allowed to eat it then? Talmud Laimar so says, You can't eat it in your gates. You have to take it to the base of Migdash. And I have another Pasuk talking about something totally different. It says, um, if there was a sacrifice that got a blemish, sacrifice that got a blemish. So what do you do? You redeem the sacrifice with uh, with money, and you bring another one. What do you do with the one that you just redeemed? It has a mum. It says, "Well, you're allowed to eat it back in your uh, wherever you want in your gates. It's not a sacrifice anymore because it got a blemish and it was redeemed." So you have to keep it pure. It says no. Hatami v'atar yachtav. You could eat it. Katsvi v'chayal, just like a deer and a chayal. I guess means like a gazelle or something. And uh, you're allowed to eat it. It's not a. Uh, it's not a sacrifice anymore. V'tana de be Rabbi Yishmal, and it was taught in the yeshiva of Rabbi Yishmal. Afil tami v'tar oichn al shulchan acha bekarach asvein chayshin. That you're allowed to eat it together. Someone that's tummy and someone that's tar. They're allowed to eat it together. Okay, now. The Ebrister says that When did we say 
that you're allowed to eat it in your gates. That's only the psule amakdashim, only the sacrifice that got a blemish that you're allowed to. But hachalei seichol, but over here you're not allowed to eat it. Okay, now what just happened? Um, what we're saying is that if the food itself is tame, that's problematic by Misa. And how do we get that? So we said, because we said that you cannot eat it in your gates. However, in your gates, you're allowed to eat a sacrifice that had a blemish. And you're, over there, you're allowed to eat it even if it's tame. Now we're, we're saying that only the psulei amakdashim you're allowed to eat it if it's tame. It's a sacrifice that had a blemish that was redeemed. However, the miser, you're not allowed to eat it if it's tame. That's our source, that not only is he not allowed to eat it if he's tame, but even if the food is tame, he's also not allowed to eat it. Our source is because it's not like the psulei amakdashim. Because psulei amakdashim is allowed to be eaten in the gates. The miser is not allowed to be eaten in the gates. And so therefore, it's also not allowed to be eaten if it's tummy. It's only the what was eaten in the gates that's allowed to be eaten when it's tummy. Okay. So what did we get from this? One of the items that was not mentioned was was that the consumption of tame truma, which was permissible, not to be eaten, but to be uh, used for burning. Now we're saying that that doesn't apply to miser, that you can't have benefit, benefit from the miser. You, know, you can't eat it, but not only can't you eat it, but you can't even use it for, for fuel. That's what we're learning from this. Yeah, that's what it seems. Okay, now we have to go back and see how do you know that by truma you were allowed to do that? By truma you were allowed to use truma that was tummy. Not to eat, but you're allowed to burn it. What's the problem? Ba mem madlikin, shem and streifa. Talmud lama, yeah. Lisukhalacha basharacha. Yeah. That's how I repeat that. Right. You read that as Gancha. My said the Gancha, right. I read, I read it as your brain. Yeah. You're reading it as the garden? No. no you're you're reading it as your grain as well. I'm reading it as your grain. That's not a limiting phrase in that statement. It's saying that you can't eat the Meiser of your grain. It goes on to say, Meiser the Gancha, Tiresh Chavitzeracha. The Meiser of your grain, your wine, and oil. You're not allowed to eat it in your gates. You have to bring it to, to uh, Yerushalayim. Right. Okay, so it just didn't finish the phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it was missing of the chulu. But the point was, leisucha lechel b'sharecha, as opposed to the sacrifice, which was b'sharecha. Right. Okay, now we see mashenki b'truma, minalan. How do you know that truma, you're allowed to use, you're allowed to consume consume, not in your body, but you're allowed to consume it. Um, you're allowed to burn it if it's tummy. When it came to the miser, it says that I did not consume it when I, in tuma. Why do we have to go through the whole thing before about? About mice are not being allowed to. Uh, that if it's tummy, you can't consume it. We have it right here. Like, to me, man, but tummy. Me, man, was referring to mice.
can't mean that he is tummy. You know, there's two types of tummy here. We're playing with this. There's a tumma on on himself that he's tummy. And then there's a tumma on the food. The food is tummy. So we know that he, if he's tummy, he's not allowed to eat it. That we know. That we have the pasuk for. If the food is tummy, we went through this whole thing, besharecha. But now when it comes to the, we're contrasting it to, to truma. How do we get that the truma you are, you are allowed to burn it when it's tummy? Is because since I have a source by my sir, but I already have a source. It's funny. It's like a, we went through a whole thing when I have a, such a simple source. Like, I'm not sure. Okay, a clear source. The Gemara says, means from it or from him. From Mimenu, we have to mevar. From the Maisa, you're not allowed to have a lot to mevar. Shemin shall kodesh initma. Maybe it's not talking about truma that you're. Maybe it's not excluding truma. Maybe it's excluding kodesh, like a sacrifice. When it says lav kal v'chaimru, ma Maisa hakal amratay lebiyat mina betamei kodesh chama lekolshkin. What is it? What are you telling me? That if a, if a sacrifice is tamei, you're allowed to use it. You're allowed to to uh, consume it. If you can't consume maisa that's tummy, how can you expect to consume a carbon that's tummy? It's not, it's not a carbon. It's kaidesh, something that was sanctified. It's kaidesh. So the Gemara says, <coughs> if, that, if that's a kalvachimer, ihachi trumanami kalvachimer. Well, trum is also more consecrated, sanctified. Then Meiser. So if you're going to use that Kalvachimer, then it leaves Truma problematic now as well, that you for sure can't consume it when it's tummy. Where it says, well, Haksiv Mimeno, but I have a verse. The Pasuk says that this item I didn't eat when I was tummy, however, or, or when it was tummy. However, Truma, I'm allowed to, it says Marisa. So what makes you choose? That truma is yes acceptable and kaidesh is not acceptable. It says mistabra kaidesh lema matina chikain penkechas. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, that's a, a mnemonic. Kaidesh is much uh, has has a whole bunch of uh, halachas that are make it considered very very strict, and so therefore we're going to assume that if it's Tameh, it's going to be forbidden. What are those strict halachas that are applied to Kaidash? He said, well, first of all, there's Pigal. means the wrong thoughts. And there's nicer. if it's left over, over the right time. There's Karban. It's called a Karban. And there's Me'ila. If someone enjoys it, uh, personal benefit from something that's consecrated. And this karas, if a person eats it while he's tame, and vasala ainen, and by a carbon, a, an ainen is not allowed to eat it. We said truma, yeah, but not a. Okay, the Gemara says, Adarabah, on the contrary, truma lime matina, chakain machpaz. That's another mnemonic. Truma has strict, because truma has machpaz. What's machpaz? Misa and chaymesh, vein lapidian, vasur lazarim. If someone eats truma uh, when he's tame, so there's a misa, there's a death penalty uh, from heaven. Chaymesh, if a czar eats it, Bishaik has to pay an extra fifth. And truma can never be redeemed. Karbanus could be redeemed uh, if there's a mum or whatever. Or um, before it was put into the holy vessel, even if it was consecrated, if it's not, a, you know, there's, there's redemptions over there for items. Basur lazarim, and a, a non kayan is not allowed to eat truma. What about, um, what about uh, kaidesh? A non kayan is allowed to eat kaidesh, yeah, because there's a bunch of sacrifices that are eaten by the owner, even though he's not a kayan, right? So the Gemara says, well, if you add them up, it's six to four, so Kaidish wins. Be same, another pshad is Karas Adifa. I don't need the six to four, just the fact that this Karas by uh, excision, it's a very strict uh, rule that makes Kaidish much more strict, and therefore 
um, when it comes to an excluding what's acceptable to be to be used when it's tame, it's not going to be kaidash. It's only going to be truma. If the person is tahar, but the item is tame, so there's malchus only by meiser and bikurim, but not by truma. Gemara says, uh, "Milku the leilaki ha'isurika." There's no malchus by truma if the if the truma was tame, but nevertheless it's prohibited. Minal and where do you know this? So I'm a krab b'shirachatech leno lezev leilacher. It says, what are you allowed to eat in your gates? Even tame. That's only psuli amakdashim. That's the pasuk that we said before. That a psuli amakdashim, a carbon that was redeemed, you're allowed to eat it in your gates, even the pure and the impure sitting together eating it. But that excludes truma. But it's a negative prohibition that's being derived from a positive command. It says, in your gates, you're allowed to eat it when it's tummy. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting out from that this, but not something else. So it's a negative that's coming out of a positive. We consider it a positive. If that's the case, then there's no malchus. This whole Gemara was all telling me that the question that they asked Rav Sheshis, is an Aral allowed to eat my sir? Rav Sheshis brought a Mishnah that doesn't say that. And therefore... We were saying that an oral is not allowed to eat maizah. We said, but maybe the fact that it didn't say it is not a proof. So we said, well, what, did, what else did it leave out? We said we left out some other things. So where did it leave it out? From the second part of the mission, second part of that price. So now we're saying, Ravashi is saying, even the first part also had some things that were left out. What did it leave out? Mid like tani, v'nayigin b'shar shnei shvua v'in lampidian mashenkin b'maizah shmamina. That was a contrast between Truma and Bikurim. A, a, a comparison between Truma and Bikurim and a contrast to Maisa. Now, when I want to add this up, what I'll say is like this. Truma and Bikurim apply through all the years, not just certain years. Maisa doesn't apply on the third year and on the sixth year. And also, Meiser could be redeemed. And Truma and Bikurim can't be, can't, cannot be redeemed. You see, it did leave out other items, even from the beginning of the Mishnah. The Mishnah was telling me it, had three, it has three things to compare. as Truma, Bikurim, and Meiser. The ratio of the Mishnah compared Truma and Bikurim and contrasted it to Meiser. And then the end of the Mishnah had a, a comparison between Meiser and Bikurim and contrasted it to Truma. So we said, what did it leave out? It left out from the end, from the, the contrast to Truma. Truma was different. Ravashi is saying, no, we can, even from the beginning, we also have things that were left out. These are these two items. Uh, does it apply for all seven years, for all the, uh, for all the years of the Shemitah? Um, and also if it could be redeemed. Okay, let's leave it over here. I have a good idea. So what was the Gemara left out? So why would we leave out the next? Come up to where we're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs>